Thank you very much for that uh, very generous introduction. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening, everyone. You've been sitting down for over an hour and a half. May I invite you to please stand up. Okay, and look to your right. And then uh, give the person on your right a soft back massage. Okay? Not too hard because they might fall asleep. All right. Wow. Does that feel good? Woo. I wish I had someone here. Okay, that's enough. About face. Yeah. All right. And give the same to the person on you're right. Okay. Praise God. That's enough. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Can we give Praisha another round of applause? Thank you for those, for your ministry of music. Praisha are my friends. We've been working together in uh, many conferences around the country. And uh, they are evangelistic and uh, very missional in their music and presentations. But uh, I just would like to thank Presia, your video presentation about the global diaspora Filipino is like an introduction to the message that I am going to deliver this evening. But I missed the first night. Uh, I should... Uh, uh, I, I should have been here to welcome you on the first night, but I was traveling. Uh, I attended a, a conference in Hong Kong, and uh, I was trying to get an earlier flight, but uh, uh, very unfortunate that uh, I arrived home at 12.30 midnight, and you were all asleep. So uh, I didn't dare to come here. But on behalf of the... Uh, of the um, Philippine Missions Association and the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, I would like to welcome you again. You are exactly in Ortigas Center. This is Pasig City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Metro Manila is composed of 13 towns and cities, and Pasig City is one of the cities inside Metro Manila. I would like to thank you Asian Missions Association for choosing Manila, Philippines, or Pasig City, uh, Philippines, for the venue of the 12th Triennial Convention of the Asia Missions Association. I know you are enjoying the messages and the reports. Hope you are enjoying your stay and visit, short visit of the Philippines. Amen? Well, it's great to see. Uh, what God is doing in uh, respective missions association in your countries. We heard great reports and including challenges that each country faces in different uh, uh, regions. But uh, talking about uh, great things and great accomplishment, I came about these uh, three newspaper men who were bragging about their country's accomplishment of the past year in terms of telecommunications um, uh, progress. The first reporter is from China. And so this uh, Chinese reported, after having dug to a depth of 10 feet last year, the Chinese scientists found traces of copper wire dating back 200 years. And they came to a conclusion that their Chinese ancestors already had a telephone network of more than 150 years ago. Well, not to be outdone by the Chinese. In the day that followed, an American archaeologist dug to a depth of 20 feet. And shortly after, a story was published in the New York Times, 
American archaeologists found traces of 250-year-old copper wire and they concluded that their ancestors already had an advanced high-tech communication network 100 years earlier than the Chinese. The third reporter is a Filipino. <laughs> Two days later, it was reported in the Philippine Daily News. After digging as deep as 30 feet in Manila, Philippines, Pedro Maunahan, the Maunahan means you cannot outbeat him, he's the pastor. Pedro de Maunahan, a self-taught archaeologist from Manila, reported that after digging 30 feet, he found nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And so therefore, Pedro and this newspaper man concluded that 300 years ago, the Philippines had already gone wireless. <laughs> no trace of copper wire. Well, these are exciting times for our countries. So in this sharing, please do remember the Philippines. Uh, exactly uh, uh, two weeks uh, from now, we will have the 2016 elections. And uh, many of us have not chosen our candidate. Well, it's tough <laughs> right now. But uh, we do not, our uh, evangelical churches, the National Association does not endorse. We do not endorse uh, candidates, but we are very much involved in voters' education and working and seeing to it, uh, supporting Comelec and other uh, freelance organizations, ensuring fair, accurate uh, counting and uh, integrity in the election processes. We want honest, we're praying for transparent and honest elections for May 9, 2016. Would you please remember our May uh, 2016 elections in your prayers? One, um, uh, the second prayer item is uh, uh, pray for the Philippine church also as we embarked, embark on a new journey of church multiplication. After 22 years of uh, fruitful ministry of Bishop Ephraim Tondero, uh, most of you would remember him. After 22 years, the Lord led him to a new ministry as new Secretary General of World Evangelical Alliance. I took over the ministry as National Director of PCEC last uh, February 23 when I was installed as the new National Director. But uh, starting my uh, ministry at the PCEC, uh, we had a church planting consultation with all uh, the church planting and missions director. And we've been talking to all the 75 denominations in our country, including uh, many independent uh, Pentecostal groups like the Philippines for Jesus Movement and the Protestant churches. And uh, in July uh, 2015, a new uh, church planting vision called Philippines, uh, Vision 120, uh, 2020, was born. Um, this is a new church multiplication program of seeing and envisioning 120,000 churches by the year 2020. That's doubling the number of the present number, which is 66,000 to 120,000 in five years. And the challenge is for every church in the Philippines, including those that are being planted by diaspora Filipinos, targeting provinces, uh, cities in the Philippines. Our challenge is that every church in the Philippines to plant one healthy, holistic, and harvesting churches through traditional methods, through simple churches, and house churches around the Philippines, including the Filipinos scattered around the world, 
and the least evangelized people groups in the country and wherever there are Filipinos around the world. Would you pray for Vision 120 by 2020? Amen? Please pray for us. Well, I would like to share a brief message on global migration and the spread of the gospel to the ends of the earth, particularly the experience of the Filipino church. Entering the room, I saw this work entitled Scattered and Gathered, a global compendium of diaspora missiology. I did not even dare to ask how much. I guess it's free. <laughs> if you browse it, but if you put it in your bags, you can ask the lady how much. <clears throat> well, more than ever, migration is a global phenomenon. People are moving to other places for various reasons. Economically, politically, educationally, religious, cultural, artistic, and many, many other reasons. I'm sure you have read some facts and data about the migration that nearly every major city in the, in the world has a sizable immigrant community. Filipinos are in Hong Kong, in Singapore, San Diego, Tokyo, Toronto, New York, Boston, Brunei, Taiwan, Edmonton, and 130 major cities around the world. Turks are in Frankfurt, Chinese and many Asians are in Vancouver. They call it Hongkouver now. Algerians are in Marseille and Paris. Indians are in London, Kuwait, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Russian Jews are in New York. Burmese in Bangkok. And Iranians in Tokyo. Koreans in the Philippines. They're growing every day. Praise God. <laughs> Amen? Well, we work with them. We work with them. Uh, in major ministries here in the Philippines. We praise God for the ministry of the Korean missionaries. We are thankful to God. Uh, over 200 million people are now living outside the country of their birth. And millions more migrate to new countries every day. It was reported that in industrialized societies, Non-citizens now typically constitute more than 5% of the population. That figure is 8.5% in the United States and Germany and is as high as 15% in Canada, 18 to 20% in Switzerland, 24% in Australia. In some oil-producing countries like Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, and Kuwait, non-citizens outnumber the natives nowadays. One, uh, one in five Canadians is an immigrant. And the annual immigration intake in Canada, as reported, is around 2 million. In 2011, the total worldwide population of concern. This is from the United Nations uh, UNHCR Statistical Yearbook. In 2011, the total worldwide population of concern, which includes refugees, asylum seekers, internally dis displaced persons, and stateless persons was estimated to number 35.4 million people, and this is 2011. 10.4 million of those people were refugees. Additionally, 80% of the refugee population was hosted by developing rather than developed nations. The Syrian civil war, the Syrian war, which is still going on, which began in the spring of 2011. 
provides an example of the relationship between internal violence and the emigration of refugees. The war has included horrific violence between government forces and the rebel forces attempting to overthrow the Assad regime. And the result is more than 80,000 deaths as well as extensive human rights atrocities. This is reported by Abidine et al. in 2013. And as a result of the de deteriorating conditions in Syria, which include the alleged use of chemical weapons, torture, civilian massacres, and so on, Syrian citizens have to flee in mass numbers. As of May 2013, and this is growing every day, more than 4 million Syrians were internally displaced and over 1.5 million had vacated the country to neighboring states as refugees. And these numbers, according to the same report, have drastically increased as circumstances have become more dire and one million of the total refugee population has fled during the first five months of 2013 alone. And the UNCHR, UNHCR suggests that these estimates may be significantly undercounted. And so despite the existence of conflicts such as the Syrian war, the governments of many developed countries continue to treat would-be refugees, including asylum seekers, as economic migrants looking for an easier way to escape poverty in the developing world. I wonder how the body of Christ and churches in these countries are responding to this phenomena and realities. For example, the United States has declared that most Haitian immigrants, the ones that are fleeing Haiti, are fleeing because of widespread poverty in the country rather than the social and political strife that plagues Haiti. And so as a result, the United States government does not afford certain privileges allocated to these refugees, to all Haitians arriving in the United States. If Haitian immigrants come to the United States through unauthorized channels, which many do, they must pass examinations, rigorous examinations of qualifications as refugees or asylum seekers. If they fail, they return to Haiti. In the Philippines, the Overseas Filipino Workers, or OFWs, we call them the new heroes of the Philippines. We call them overseas, OFWs, or uh, Overseas Filipino Workers. But looking at the data, the facts here, the economic impact of the 12 or 13, it varies because they say hundreds of thousands are not documented. So the economic impact of these 13 million OFWs is actually the bedrock of the Philippine economic financial stability. The total amount of OFWs is more than 20 billion per year. A writer, a, Calif a Filipino California based writer, Perry Diaz, wrote A century after the Filipino diaspora began, a global Filipino nation emerged. The Filipinos in diaspora. A new global Filipino nation emerged. 
the Philippines borders, according to him, are now just imaginary lines demarcating the country's political boundaries. But a borderless global Filipino nation has superimposed itself on the earth with 13 millions scattered living in more than 130 countries. The dispersion of peoples around the globe, including the 13 million Filipinos, the 4 million Syrians, and many other close to 220 or 250 million people around the globe, I believe and I know that many of you have, have, have uh, embraced this theolo theological and missiological implications, believing that this is a work of God in our time. You and I have a mandate from God in this critical era of evangelism and missions. The dispersion of people, while many countries say it is political or economic, the dispersion of people, I believe, is not political or economic accident. The immigration of peoples around the world has more than political and economic implications. You have read, many of you have read Acts chapter 17. The Apostle Paul saw this 1,800 years ago and believes that the scattering of people around the world has theological and missiological implications. And he expressed this conviction in his message, in his sermon on Mars Hill when he visited the city of Athens in Acts chapter 17. And so when Paul arrived, he observed the city's pronounced religious pluralism. And he went to a place where there is a shrine, where there is a monument dedicated to an unknown God. And he went there to preach about Christ. And so, in this passage, he said, it says, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus. People of Athens, I see that in every way, you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So are you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And He is not served by human hands as if He needed anything. Rather, He Himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. 26. From one man, He made all the nations, and they should inhabit the whole earth. And He marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so they would seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him, though He is not far from any one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, we are His offsprings. The main thrust, this is a long passage, but zeroing on verse 26 and 27, we see that God is sovereignly involved in human history and in all human affairs. And He determines what happens in history, including globalization, including global dispersion and migration of people. He determines what happens in history. Then He opens doors and opportunities for people to respond to God's initiative. 
And here we see and notice that when people reach out to God, they will find Him and they will not be rejected by God. Brothers and sisters of AMA, today is a crucial moment in Asia and in global evangelization. Praise God that His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is coming back again. And He's using every means, including this person of people, as painful as it is, to let every nation that He is the Savior and people will hear the gospel to the ends of the earth. PCEC, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, has recognized this role, a very important role in this end time history. Not only in the evangelization of the Philippines, but reaching the Filipinos scattered around the world and training them to become missionaries wherever they are, to reach out and to evangelize their host countries. Every Filipino church has become a local church, a church operating locally with a vision to touch the world to the ends of the earth with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In verse 26, we see God determines the times and the exact places where people should live. I like the rendering of the King James Version when it says, God determined the times before appointed. People might give reasons why people choose a place over others. But Paul was certain that God was in it. Why people leave and choose those places. It's not an accident that close to 13 million Filipinos are leaving, emigrating from the Philippines and immigrating in their host countries in more than 100, 130 countries of the world. I believe that God does not manipulate people to come to Him. But He works in and through human events, such as what's happening around the world today. He works in and through human events so that people would realize their need of God wherever they are. Thousands of OFWs have migrated in different countries, in Asia, in Europe, Americas, and Africas. I don't know if there's any country around here that do not have Filipino nannies, domestic helpers, nurses, engineers, doctors. While this Pinoy's short for Filipino, are seeking greener pastures outside of the Philippines. Thank God, many of them are finding greater riches than dollars, than sterling, than pounds and yens. Thousands are finding eternal riches. They're finding eternal life this world cannot offer. God has a purpose for the dispersion of people. Of the 13 million Filipinos scattered around the world, and this is the passion, one of the passions of PMA, Philippine Missions Association, one of the 13, of the 13 million Filipinos scattered around the world, up to 1 million are born again believers. About 10% who emigrate from the Philippines and immigrate in other countries, 10% are born-again believers. And you see what's going to happen here. Our task of the Filipino church is to disciple them 
and to train them so that when they go to other countries, they would not look for a fellowship. They would not look for a church so that they can be nourished spiritually. But once they are discipled and trained and equipped and told, when they go to different countries, they would not look for churches. They would start house churches, office, office churches. Everywhere they go around the world. That is our prayer. That they would become missionaries, reaching their host countries, the nationals, planting the gospel in the hearts of people, starting house churches and local communities everywhere, wherever they are in the world. God determines the exact times and places where people would live so that people would seek Him and so that people will serve Him. Verse 27, the second part of this passage that we're looking says, God did this so that men would seek Him. We have read, Jesus said, No one comes to me unless the Father draws him to me. When people leave outside of the country, spiritual hunger develops. I have met many OFWs in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia, including my 10-year experience as church planting missionary in the Washington, D.C. area, where in 1995, there are 60,000 Filipino-Americans that lives in that area where you live, Lisa and Brother Chin. Now, it's probably more than 100,000 including the Fairfax County. During their stay in foreign land, one of their common experience is loneliness and homesickness, being away from husbands or wives and children, family and friends. They would look for acceptance. They would look for belongingness and love from different sources. And spiritual hunger develops as a result of this. Thousands of these Filipinos who have gone abroad have found friends among drug syndicates, syndicates, drug dealers, among crime syndicates, prostitution, and many become prey to people who take advantage of their weaknesses. Hundreds of them, some I visited in jails. Some were sentenced to die in other countries. Many are still in prostitution, drugs, and many have abandoned their families. They have abandoned ties with their loved ones because of the lure and the temptations of being alone in foreign land. Many of them also have been attracted by cults and false religions and are led away to wrong beliefs. Reports also say that these 13 million Filipinos that have gone abroad, they have wives and children or husbands that are left, about 25 million of them live in the Philippines still and are separated from their fathers and mothers and their children. Can you imagine the impact of that to the Filipino family? And this is one other item. Pray for us, the Philippine church, that we would be able to minister to many of them. One of the things that we do at PMA is we, we, we train churches and pastors so that in every church, there would be an OFW desk. We train them to reach out, how to reach out to the families of overseas Filipino workers. But praise God, I know that in many countries such as yours and around the world, 
Praise God for the ministry of many churches who dared take risks to reach out to the immigrants who are in their countries. Six years ago, we invited an Indian pastor. Is Mark Sudhir here? Mark, are you here? He's not here, but I invited him because I told him I will be telling his story again. We invited him because two weeks prior to this communication, I received a, uh, an SOS call from Phil Indian uh, Church in Makati. They pray, they've been praying for years and years to have an Indian pastor because I was told that in Makati alone, there are about 60,000 Sindhis and Punjabis. And so the Filipino church is reaching out to them. We invited Mark and the wife. So six years ago, the church has grown and that have planted Filipino Indian churches in Antipolo, in Baguio, in, in Puerto Princesa, and many places around the Philippines, reaching the Sindhis and the Punjabis in the Philippines. And there are Koreans, Chinese, and many immigrants in our country. And we're praying, and I'm challenging, we're challenging that every Filipino church would look to their neighbors if they see other immigrants, students that live in the country, reach out to them. There are so many stories about that. I worked, as I've said, I work in Washington, Washington D.C. as a church planter from 1995 to 2006. And I started uh, five Filipino international churches around uh, the beltway of the Washington, D.C. area. And later on, coordinated and coached Asian church planters with the Baptist General Conference in the United States, including African church planters. One Sunday morning, while I was preaching in Bowie, Maryland, four ladies came up to me. Two are nannies, and two are helpers in homes of rich Bethesda families and Arlington. And they told me they are from Jesus is Lord Philippines, J-I-L Philippines. And I told them, okay, you are welcome, but this is a Baptist church. <laughs> and you are Pentecostals. They said, no, Pastor, we do not have a church here. But our vision is one day we will have a JIL church in Washington, D.C. area. A nanny, two nannies, and two DH. And I was, you know, scratching my head. Wow. Do you know what place is this? This is the home of the nation. This is the capital of the United States. But he said, well, we just want to reach out. And they invited me. Pastor, would you come to Arlington Drive? We will pay for your gasoline and transportation and lead a 15-minute devotional, and we will do the rest. The first time I came, there were just only four ladies. The next Thursday I came, there are 16. So every Thursday, it increases and increases. Well, I came back four years ago. They are now about 200 members. They just bought a building. It's worth about $3 million in, the, in Metro Washington, D.C. area. And so this JIL, Washington, D.C., were started by, by two nannies and two domestic helpers. They can be used by God, amen, as church planters. But one of the reasons why the work grew fast. Simply, they reached out to the, to the same people, you know, nannies and workers that work in Bethesda and Metro Washington, D.C. area. They just prayed for them. Prayed for those people who are hungry spiritually, but because of loneliness and being alone in different country, people have come to seek God and they have found Jesus Christ. Well, lastly, in this passage, I can tell you many, many stories of many Filipinos around the world with the same experience. But lastly, it says here, Paul was certain that the moment a person reached out for God, 
he or she, anyone, will find him. Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. God will never drive away anyone who reaches out to him. And God will use events, circumstances. Some are very bitter and difficult. But God will create hunger. And anyone who seek him will find him. And God will not reject anyone who reaches out to him. God uses scattering of people, emigration and immigration of people in many countries to initiate salvation encounter. And God will use all kinds of situations outside, even outside of our churches, away from families in lonely and foreign land. So people will open their hearts to Jesus Christ. And so in your countries and in mine, when God opens the door for witness, here or anywhere in the Lord, when you see immigrants in your country, touch them, pray for them, and take the meeting as divine appointment for evangelization. Host countries of Amma. The world has come to your doorsteps. Yes, we still send cross-cultural missionaries. We're praying that many more from the Philippines would serve your countries or many other countries. Traditional way, you know, creative ways, tent makers. But we should also consider the world has come to our doorsteps. They are in our cities, in our countries. Many times, or sometimes, they live just outside of our churches. Pray for wisdom. How to welcome the immigrants in your neighborhood, in your country. Evangelize and intentionally reach out. If you see them in your countries. May the Lord bless all your efforts. Thank you again for choosing the Philippines. And may God continually bless the rest of the hours and the days that you will be spending in the Philippines. I was asked to close in prayer. I just pray to close this session. Father, we thank you, God. In difficult situations, circumstances, and events, the heart of God is to reach out to people so that they too, everyone, will become part of the family of God. Thank you for AMA, and thank you for the countries that are represented here. Thank you for the ministries and the, the missionary endeavors, the reports that we heard, the great things that God is doing in the past many years through AMA. Father, we thank you for this word, the experience of Apostle Paul, the experience of the Filipino church, and I believe that many countries and churches here have the same or similar stories. Thank you for opening doors, different kinds of opportunities, including reaching the immigrants in our countries and training immigrants, equipping people who leave our country to become missionaries wherever they are. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much.